Hey, it's Leo. Welcome to my channel. For all of you who are new here, welcome. I'm glad you have found me. Uh, thank you to Bob the Booker and Camilla at Hasty Books for the shout outs uh, that may have led you to my page. Uh, and welcome. Each week, along with whatever bookish things I do on my video, I lift up a nonprofit that's doing really good work in the world. I will make a donation and I encourage you to like, follow, or donate as you are inspired. This week, uh, in honor of the last day of Pride, I'm filming this on June 30th, I will be making a donation to Reconciling Works. Uh, they are a nonprofit that is doing uh, really good work accompanying churches in the Lutheran ELCA denomination as they seek to become more welcoming. Um, this shirt is also actually from them as well. Um, Lutherans for Black Lives and 100% um, of the proceeds from this shirt go towards reparations in the ELCA, which is the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I encourage you to check out the links below. This week, uh, I'm going to try to do my first tag. I was tagged by Camilla at Hasty Books. Thank you. Uh, and uh, this is a rapid fire book tag, which was originated by Kate of Girl Reading. So we will see how this goes. Um, I hope you enjoy this content. <laughs> I do want to do two other things on this video. The first is just to wish you all a happy pride. Um, I have to show off the pride mask that my mom made for me and several others. Uh, we were going to wear this at our local pride events, um, but um, heat and COVID and so forth um, precluded us from wearing them, but I will show them to you now. Happy pride. Also, once we get through the book tag, um, I have not opened a box of books that co has come in the mail, and I thought it'd be fun. I've never done a book haul uh, unboxing. That's the word. I haven't done an unboxing yet. So um, let's see what's in here. But first to the rapid fire book tag from Camilla at Hasty Books. Uh, question one, ebook or physical book? So I definitely prefer the physical book. I only read an ebook if that's the only way that I can read it. I love the paper. I love it on my shelf. I love the texture and the weight and the smell and all the things. The colors of the cover. Okay, I go on. Question two, paperback or hardback? I feel like that really depends. How's that for a wishy-washy answer? This is going really well. Question three, online or in-store book shopping? I do like in-store book shopping. I live in Portland, Oregon, where we have Powell's Books. Uh, shout out to all the Powell's Books fans. Um, but we also have a lot of other really great bookstores. Um, so I, I definitely enjoy those. Um, I'm gonna say if it involves books and me taking them home or getting them in my house, I'm in, sign me up. I'll do both all day long. Okay, question, the next question. Trilogies or series? I'm gonna say series. I think if the character and the cast and the stories are interesting enough that I want more than one, I'm gonna want more than three, probably. Heroes or villains? Definitely heroes. Uh, I just like rooting for the good guys. Sorry. Although, so that's, okay, so I'm also working on a work in progress. Uh, I've written draft one of a novel, now I'm kind of really gutting it to hopefully wrangle together draft two, but that would involve actually writing and less um, other things in life. But um, speaking of which, goal for July, NaNoWriMo. Any of you doing it for, for July? Okay, that's my goal, I digress. I really want to make my villain in my novel, which is going to be a murder mystery, interesting so that's I uh, so as much as I'm rooting for heroes and I want to also make my hero interesting um I, I I want my villain to be someone that actors would really want to play if my book made it to the movies or tv so that really juicy villain role I don't know if I answered the question but I think that gives you a little insight into uh my brain oh, this is... the next question a book you want everyone to read. Okay, maybe this is a cop-out. I want everyone to read the book that just really 
gives them energy or hope or joy, whatever that may be. So it's going to be different for each of us, right? So I'm not going to say I think there's one book that everyone should read because we're all just so different and that's awesome. Like two of the books that I've really enjoyed this year have been Amari and the Knight Brothers and uh, House in the Cerulean Sea. And I do recommend those to everybody, but that may not be your jam. And what book gives you joy and energy or inspiration or hope or courage or passion or makes you think? That's how I'm gonna answer that question. That's the book I want you to read. And then I want you to tell me about it. Okay, this next question. Recommend an underrated book. Okay, I have one. It's really battered, uh, my copy. This is The Genesee Diary from Henry Nowen, reports from a Trappist monastery. I haven't read this for several years, but I um, took it with me on a trip to Guatemala where I was uh, studying Spanish that I've forgotten most of. And this was my companion during that trip. It's a diary of his day to day in seven months um, as he's a guest in a Trappist monastery. He talks about his anxieties and then also the calm that he finds. And maybe that's what uh, struck me about it was that sense of movement from um, anxiety to calm as found through rhythm, routine, noticing the divine um, community, etc. Uh, again. It's probably been too long since I've read this to give a good synopsis, but I think this counts as a um, underrated book. The next prompt is the last book you finished. The last book I finished was A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Denham. I'll tell more about my thoughts on this book in my June wrap up, which I will be filming later. All right, the weirdest thing I've used as a bookmark, I mean, I use a lot of stuff as bookmarks, but I'm not sure anything counts as really weird yeah uh stuff used books yes or no absolutely yes i do love new books and i love used books i think uh the answer to that is i love books so yes mystery nonfiction in the area of history or like anti-racist work nonfiction, like theological or spiritual borrow or buy i do think it makes a lot of sense to borrow books that definitely is the wise financial choice um, but one of my hobbies can be at times in my life um, buying books so i do enjoy that next question characters or plot can i have both next question long or short books if it's a book i'm digging long is good but uh I don't do much else when I'm reading a book. I like to really just like stay in the story and let the chores pile around me. It's just better in my life if the books are shorter because then I can like submerge, emerge, what's around, get the next one, submerge. So that'll be my answer to that. Long or short chapters? I don't think I have a preference. Um, I want the pacing to be good in the book, but I don't know if I care if it's long or short. Name the first three books you think of. It's hard because I have a big bookshelf right there. So maybe I'll just, uh, okay, if I'm not looking, um, first three books I think of, I just saw some. Okay, for some reason, Anne of Green Gables came to mind, grew up on that, loved it. Well, now that I'm on that track, Little Women, and then, um, a Palm for Mrs. Polyfax, which is um, one of the Dorothy Gilman Polyfax series that I enjoy. Books that make you laugh or cry. Uh, I mean, I definitely prefer books that make me laugh. Our world or fictional worlds? I think I prefer our world. Audiobooks, yes or no? Yes, 100%, yes, all the time. Yes, in addition to paper. I want them both, I want it all. I love audiobooks um, for a variety of reasons. Um, sometimes my eyes just get tired or um, I, the print is too small or I can't see because the lighting is bad uh, and audiobooks are better. I love hearing the different voices and sometimes I don't know how to pronounce names or places or words um, and so it's great to hear um, the author or voice actor pronounce them. 
I can go walking or do laundry or such like that when I'm listening to an audiobook. So definitely, yes, 100% on audiobooks. Do you ever judge a book by its cover? Oh, yes, I for sure do. Um, and I mean, I think, right, that's part of, it's not a perfect science, but part of the industry is that like tone, genre, style are communicated through the cover. And so you can tell, for example, theoretically, a cozy from a thriller from a bodice ripper. I'm very picky about my the tone of the books that I often will pick up. And so I do use cover as one of the selection criteria. I also will look at like reviews and recommendations from booktubers and all of you. So you all definitely influence what I read. Um, but yes, I do judge book by its cover. Book to movie or book to TV adaptations? Sure. I really love um, all of the um, Poirot and Miss Marple um, adaptations. This isn't really a book to TV adaptation strictly, but I have to mention it because I love it so much. Doctor Who, David Tennant, the episode, The Unicorn and the Wasp, in which Agatha Christie is there and there's a murder in a manor house. I love that. And I particularly love Catherine Tate and David Tennant in that episode. And the um, scene in the kitchen where uh, he's been poisoned. Anyway, tell me in the comments if you know what I'm talking about because, oh, I, that's just amazing. Okay. I digress. I'll come back to the questions. A movie or TV show you preferred to its book? I can't think of one right now. And the last question on the thing that I printed out. Uh, series or standalones? I, I prefer series. If the characters are people that I'm going to fall for in a I'm drawn into the story and want to see more of their lives, Generally, I think I want to see a standalone, I mean, uh, a series, but there's for sure books that I've read that uh, are, I've loved the books, but a standalone is just fine. Okay, I finished that, enough rambling. So I'm gonna tag some people to do this series of questions. And if I didn't tag you and you'd like to do them, please uh, feel free to do this. So I will tag, Bob at Bob the Booker, AJ Dunn at AJ Dunn Reads and Writes, Jesse at Lady Lovestead Books, DJ at Indian Cooks and Books, Shannon at Shannon and a Book. I look forward to watching all of your videos and all of the thoughts you have on those questions. So now let's uh, open this box. How do I get in? All right. Ooh. An elderly lady is up to no good. It's smaller than I thought it would be. That's really little. This sounds really interesting, but it looks really fun. So we'll check that out. Ooh. The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet. Um, so many of you have recommended this. So this, I wanted to pick this up. This is a rollicking space adventure with a lot of heart. So. That sounds intriguing. And one more. Oh, oh, that's pretty. Oh, can you see the gold? This is The Widows of Malabar Hill. Um, I listened to this on audio. Uh, it's a mystery. I will talk about it in my June wrap up, um, but I really enjoyed it. And, um, oh, look at that. Ooh, okay, that's gonna look good. All right, that's everything. Thank you again so much for sticking with me with this chaotic rambling book tag. Um, it was very fun to do, even though it's past my bedtime. And I look forward to doing more tags. Uh, in June, I'm also, nope, not June, because it's tomorrow's July. In July, I will be posting my June wrap up. And I've also been tagged by Bob the Booker in the mid-year freakout tag. So I will be doing that and have some ideas about what I want to read in July. But um, if you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments below. And thanks again for watching. Don't forget you're awesome.